Um, so these have been trying times for us all. They've been really difficult. There's been a lot of things that we've had to deal with. Uh, I think the current measures taken by the government uh, to, slow, to slow this disease really worked a lot to spread us apart, haven't they? They forced us to be in different places. And but not only in our church life, but in many other facets of our life as well. You know, all the schools are closed, people are facing layoffs, lots of people have lost their jobs. Uh, we're not allowed to go to social events that are more than 10 people, like here. Uh, and the list goes on and on. There are a lot of stressors that we have to deal with. Um, and when we think about it, the uncertainty that lies ahead because of this thing and the strong and abrupt downturn in the economy, you know, all these things. And I can't remember a time in my life when anything like this has ever happened. And, and what I think is really interesting or difficult on a different level is that we're being asked to do all this, we're being asked by the government to do all this alone, to do it without our friends and our neighbors for support, without um, being able to travel uh, and go and see people. Um, and I think this isolation can be hard to deal with because in times of crisis, in times that are hard, people want to be with each other. Um, and if we can't, we might experience feelings of loneliness, feelings of fear, anxiety, despondency. You know, we're, we're meant to be together, which is why I think this makes it so difficult. But I think for that reason, I think that it's even important, it's very important, more important than ever before for us to stay in contact with each other, uh, to support each other during these difficult times. Because, you know, we can stay in touch with each other without having to physically be next to each other. And that this church is a precious gift from God, and it must be cherished. It has an awesome power to keep us stronger and to keep us honest, to keep us on the right track, to keep us in the way. Um, and I know that I've spoken to a lot of you over the last week. I've spoken to a lot of folks over the phone. I know that there have been a lot of challenges, a lot of things where people didn't feel well. Um, things that really make people upset. Like when you go to the grocery store and you can't buy basic paper goods like toilet paper. Um, you see all these bare shelves. People sliding their carts up to the shelf and sticking their arm out to push all the food into the cart. You know, that kind of stuff makes you feel panicked. It creates a sense of panic in you as well. You're like, why are they so scared? Why are they so afraid? Why are they so panicked that they're just pushing all of the food into their cart, grabbing every bag of rice that they can find? So all that, them acting irrationally, it makes us feel irrational too. So there's a lot of drama associated with this. So we have a responsibility to try to minimize that isolation and that feeling of loneliness. We need to reach out and call our brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to look for support from each other, from our family, from our friends, and do not become truly isolated. Remember, Email, text messages, all these things are still out there. Even instant message on Facebook. I don't use Facebook, but a lot of people do, you know. There's a lot of ways to stay in touch. And as we continue to maintain our relationships with each other, as we continue to be encouraged and strengthened by each other, let us not forget who put us together in the first place, who gave us this gift of this church in the first place. Let us continue to remember our relationship with God, because that truly is the most important. And we cannot forget that in times like this, he is our rock, our strength, he is our very sanity. And he gives us the ability to cope with all of these stresses much better than we could handle it on our own. We need to rely on him 
if we want peace in our darkest hours. I'd like to share a passage with you from Psalm 18, 1 through 3. It's part of a psalm of thanksgiving by David. And it, what it does is it brings uh, remembrance to all that God does to give us strength when we face hard times. So if you want to turn to Psalm 18, 1 through 3, or it will be available on your screen, hopefully. <laughs> uh, it says, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. The first two verses in this passage give us a very important truth, don't they? They tell us something very powerful. They tell us about the power, about the protection of God, and that through our faith in him, we do have something that's truly amazing, a strong deliverer, a fortress, a savior. And that for a Christian is God's son, Jesus Christ. And it is a real comfort to know that in our times of most difficult need, that God is with us. He continues to be with us. He is continuously here by our side as a church in the midst of us, that we are all the blocks of the temple and that he is our holy of holies inside of us. He is our shepherd and he is guiding us through our lives by way of his word and his strong and firm but gentle hand. We need God, especially now, and we should not try to go it alone because if we do, we probably will not succeed. I'm reminded of a song, um, a Mighty Fortress by Martin Luther. I'm reminded of the second verse. Uh, he says, Did we in our own strength confide? Our striving would be losing. We're not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. Thus ask who that may be, Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord Sabbath, his name from age to age the same, and he must win the battle. The lyrics are true. We can't rely on our own strength. We would be so much weaker and more vulnerable if we did. There are people out there panicking, losing control right now because they have no one else to have hope or trust in. We'd be so much more fearful if we didn't have God in our lives, of what laid ahead, of what um, would happen to us if we would happen to perish. And as Martin Luther says, our striving would be losing because it was striving without hope or striving without meaning in life. But it is not this way when we have God, when we have Jesus Christ in our life. Because Jesus is the Lord of heaven and earth. And as Martin Luther said, he will win the battle. His promises are real, and they cannot be taken away. His promises are real, and they cannot be taken away. It's something that we always need to keep with us. We need to remember that as bad as things get, they can never get really that bad, can they? Because you know where your soul is going. You know where you are going for your eternal life. And you know that this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of the journey. And there might be a lot of things in this world that can kill us or harm us or do all kinds of things that we dislike. But one thing uh, is true, that this world and, or anything in it cannot become, come between us and the love of God, the love of Christ, and our salvation through him. If you turn to Romans 8, 38 through 39, it says, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, 
nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's important to remember these things, to remember where true power comes from, where true power in the universe lies. When we start to feel worried or panicked or stressed, we need to remember that Jesus will never let us go, that he will never forsake us in our time of need, and that there is nothing on earth that can stand between us and him and his protection over our souls. I want to take us back to our initial passage in Psalm 18, uh, 1 through 3. I want to talk a little bit about the third verse because I think that little verse has a lot to say. It says, I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. David's writing that he will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be, worthy to be praised. David takes time to pray God, pray to God, to praise God. He takes time to talk to God. And that's so important for us too. He takes time to gain assurance and remembrance through his prayer. It helps him to remember that God's there. You know, if you don't talk to or associate with somebody for a long time, you kind of forget about them. There's probably a lot of people you went to high school with uh, a long, long time ago that you have no idea where they are now in their life because you never kept in touch. Well, the same thing is true with God. If we don't keep in touch, if we don't keep talking to him and remembering that he's there with us all the time, then we're going to lose our relationship with him. We're going to lose our remembrance of him. We'll lose our, lose our connection to him. It can be easy to forget that God is in control of everything, that he is with us and that he has secured our souls in heaven. It can be easy to forget that, even though it is an awesome thing, even though it's a wonderful thing. The priorities and the most important things in life can get crowded out by all these little voices, all these little troubling things that scare us, panic us, make us afraid. All the little things in the world can pile up and push out of our mind the things that are the most important, the things that we really need to focus on. And prayer helps to fix that because we, we remember that God is with us in this struggle. We are reminded of all that he has done in our lives and all that he continues to do in our life. And when we talk with God, we remember that he is listening, that he hears us, that, it, he, that we know that he's in control, ultimately that he is in control of all things. And I think that that knowledge and that peace that we get from that assurance is a precious gift from God. It is so powerful that it's even beyond our understanding, that it can give us a tranquility in the deepest part of our soul, in the deepest part of our hearts, in something that can't even be comprehended. And I think that that's you know, put best by you know, the Apostle Paul here in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. You know, when he says, the Lord is near, the Lord's near, don't forget that God is with you, that Jesus is with you. Be anxious for nothing. Don't be afraid. Don't be panicked. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. If and this is a big if. If you allow yourself to accept the power and the control and the strength that comes from Jesus into your life, then he will give you peace. He will calm your heart even when you're going through some of the worst things that you could possibly imagine. He will give you strength to deal with things if you're willing to trust in him. He will give you that ability. There are a lot of things in my life that would have caused me to crumble from stress and worry and all kinds of other things if it were not for my faith. And I think that you, if you think back on your own life, you can think at times too when God was there, when he 
gave you the strength to keep going, to keep pushing through, to keep doing the right things, to not compromise, to not be panicked and not be afraid. God gives you the strength. So don't leave them. Stay with them. Stick with them. Because Jesus will give you peace from your anxiety. He will give you comfort in your fear. And I think that we can see that on display in the Bible, can't we? We can see the kind of strength that God provides people. We think about the apostles and the incredible, incredibly brave things that Paul did to spread the good news of Jesus, even though he faced persecution and death. He was able to do those things because of his faith and his trust in the Lord. So even if things seem hard to us, we can overcome them with our faith and our trust in the Lord. So even though we face dangerous and scary times ahead, God will not disappoint us. So we can face this time of uncertainty and distress if we learn to lean upon God, if we have faith that can overcome darkness in this world. We can have peace and serenity knowing that if we perish, if we die for whatever reason, whether it be this virus, some other virus, a car accident, a fire, who knows, there's, a, <laughs> there's probably a million things that can kill us. Um, that for whatever reason, that that is truly only the beginning. The journey has just begun and that we have eternity waiting for us. The promises of God are waiting for us. So let's recap to remember what we talked about this morning. We need to remain strong and encourage each other, even if we cannot physically be together. But this church is important. It is a gift from God. And everything that God gives has awesome power. We have a strong and powerful defender in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is a fortress and our mighty conqueror, our strong defender, and he will win, win the battle no matter what that battle is. So we need to put our faith and our trust in him. Third, that nothing can ever come between us and the love of God. Our souls and eternal salvation are held by the power of his might and nothing, there, that means nothing can undo that. Whatever evil comes for us, it has no power in the presence of God. And fourth, prayer is important. It is a reminder of God's power and a reminder that he is always with us and listening to us. It gives us peace in even the darkest hours of our lives. So at this time, I want to share with you the good news of Jesus Christ. I know you can't come forward. Maybe you can in your living room. I don't know. But I want to tell you what the good news is. That if you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you repent, that is to turn your heart towards him, that is to give up sin and evil and human ways for God's ways. Turn your heart and your desire toward God. And you are willing to be baptized for remission of your sins and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and salvation for your eternal soul. At this time, we're going to stand and sing our closing song. Thank you.